We can get started. We can get started. <laughs> because they're at time. Oh, here, I'll turn on my video. Oh, this is nice. <laughs> All right. Hi, everyone. I'm going to get started because we're at time. Um, welcome to the first PTO meeting of our school year. I'm Vanessa Swenson. I'm the president for this year. Um, it's my first year doing it. And I just want to say welcome to everyone that's in person and welcome to everyone who is online. Um, for the folks online, I popped the link to an abbreviated agenda there. So you can feel free to check that out. And if you have any questions, just say something in the chat and then we have somebody monitoring. So um, we'll be able to grab those. And for folks in person, feel free to um, shout out questions and uh, we'll answer those as well. So I just wanna take a quick moment to say a big thank you to Resource West and Ashley Gatro. Um, I know that there was a classroom um, when we started out at school that was a little um, under supplied. And you know, with Jen's help, Jen Cameron's help also, you know, Ashley, Got you got in contact with Resource West, was able to stock that um, classroom with supplies. And so we're really grateful for our community sponsors. I just wanna say um, thanks to Resource West and uh, one wonderful um, organization they are to support our West Metro community. Um, next on our agenda is just a brief introduction for all the board members. I'm just gonna read them off. Um, you know, Carrie Ross is vice president, Shanna Bodilli is Treasurer, Lucy Joel said a secretary, Jen Cameron is our volunteer coordinator. And then we have five members at large, Christina Black, Jim Cameron, Abby Morton, Kathy Ottos, and Teresa Dieterman. And we have our teacher representatives, Kim Rosso and Martha Raid. And our principal is uh, Dr. Haybison. Um, the next item on our agenda is to um, have a brief talk from some of our school board candidates. So I sent out an invitation to the five candidates and um, three responded that, um, that they would like to say something. And I only see, I only have a video from one and one other in person. So I'm gonna start off with the video first and I just let each of the school board candidates know that they have two minutes to um, tell us a little bit about themselves. Uh, so I'll get started with the first one here. Hi, Tanglin PTO. I'm Jen Bouchard, current chair of the Hopkins School Board. I'm sorry I can't be with you in person this evening. I have class for my doctoral program in educational leadership through Mankato State. So it's been an intense four years since I was first elected to the board, and we've accomplished so much together as a community. So this re-election campaign isn't so much about me as it is about all of us. And here are a few things uh, that we have accomplished together over the past four years. So we've brought many more voices, especially the voices of our Hopkins scholars and families and caregivers into the spaces where decisions are made. We've welcomed new leaders and teachers who more closely reflect the demographics of our scholars. We've advocated for funding and policies at the state and federal levels to support the implementation of Vision 2031 We've made bold and necessary equitable policy and practice decisions to ensure that our schools truly serve each scholar. We've spent the past two years structurally balancing our budget in the context of state and federal funding for public education that has not kept pace with inflation in addition to COVID related challenges. And we've worked collabor collaboratively and holistically to meet the needs of our scholars during the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. So if I'm reelected, I'm looking forward to welcoming two new board colleagues to the table next January to continue building a strong board culture so that we can continue this crucial work in collaboration with you. And as always, I welcome your questions and feedback and you can find out more about the campaign as well as my contact info at jenbouchard.org. Thank you.
All right, great. Thanks, Jen Bouchard, for sending that through. And then the other candidate that's in person is Jason Ross. So Jason, I'll invite you to come to the microphone. Good evening. I want to personally thank the Hopkins, or sorry, <laughs> Tangle and PTO for hosting and inviting one of the Hopkins School Board, um, hopefully new members to the team. Uh, what I want to do is kind of go over who I am what I'm all about, and then kind of what I'm representing. First, uh, yes, as you can tell, my face does match what you see on the shirt. I am Jason Ross. Uh, I have three kiddos here at Tentanglin Elementary. Uh, Quentin and Anaya are my twins. Don't tell them I said this. Anaya is older by two minutes. Quentin does not like that. And I have my baby, Caden, who is in the kindergarten. Uh, Quentin is in... Uh, uh, Mrs. Vang's class and Anaya is in Ms. Uh, Schumacher. Sorry, <laughs> I apologize, Ms. Schumacher. Uh, so what I'm representing and what I'm hoping to bring to the table is continuing, continuing the work on student mental health and wellness, uh, reimagining uh, equitable education for all of our scholars, and then collaborating more with CFAC and our district leadership to address the funding gap that our school district is um, being impacted by. Uh, I've lived here for approximately seven years. I've been in Minnetonka. We moved from St. Paul to Minnetonka. And uh, what I like about Hopkins is just the diversity of socioeconomic and culturally. And I'm hoping that you guys think of me on November 2nd uh, when you're at your ballot. Thank you. Early voting on September 17th. Early voting on September 17th. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Jason. Uh, so I have the other three represented or the candidates um, listed in the agenda. So feel free to check them out as well. And as um, Jason mentioned, the voting day is on November 2nd. So up next on our agenda is a Q&A with Dr. Hay Bison. Good evening, everyone. Hello, folks at home. Um, actually, I better take one, too. So the handout is going out live to folks here. If you're at home, I'm going to attach the same handout to my Friday update. So you, you can look for it there. I just want to briefly cover a few things that will be important for you to know as we start this year. And as the staff members know, we didn't go backwards. I mean, we are still going forward. And, and what we've noticed so far is that the adjustment to being back in school is a, a little bit more tricky than it's been in past years. Uh, you can tell the students have not come off of a regular school year last year, and they're still adjusting to that in-person feel, the environment. And it's it's going to take us some time to really get that strong footing that we would normally have. And that's okay. We anticipated that and we are here to help your students as they adjust to all day masking as part of it. But I think more than anything, it's just being around their class again. You know, last year, they were just little squares on the computer and being in a classroom with 20 plus people has a completely different feel to it. Uh, and we're up for the challenge. Uh, the staff have been fantastic. We've done some great learning early on. The students, it's been wonderful to have them back in place. But if there are a few things that I wanted to point out, one of the best gifts you can give your children is your undivided time. By that, I mean, when you have conversations about your school day, when you ask how they're doing, when you have that time reading, be purposeful about putting your cell phone away. Find a different spot to put it. Students notice, your, your children notice if there's a bing or a bong and your eyes go to that rather than on them, they pick that up. And even when I'm having lunch with students, if my phone rings in my office, my regular phone, they always automatically stop and look at me and say, aren't you gonna get that? And I always look them in the eye and say, no, because you're the most important person in the world right now. 
and it makes them feel very special. It's very small, but if, if there is one thing I hope you take from tonight, it's to put that phone away for a while when you get that chance to be with your children. The other part of it too is remain curious. Sometimes we jump to what we think our children are trying to tell us without truly listening. And we jump to conclusions about what we think they might be trying to say. And by that, I, I mean, have a phrase in the back of your mind, tell me more, or, oh, I'd like to hear more about that. Don't assume because the story is starting in one direction that that means they're going down that pathway. They might be trying to tell you something completely different. So get used to asking questions like, tell me more, or what else do you wanna tell me about that? And during those conversations, completely avoid yes or no questions. Do you have an answer? Yes. And when you ask yes or no, good or bad questions, that's what they're going to answer. So if you're truly interested to hear about reading class, say, tell me, tell me three things that you remember from your language arts lesson today or from class today. What's something you learned in PE? Be specific and show that you're interested beyond yes, no, good, bad, fine. And you'll be surprised at how good they get at having that conversation with you. The other thing I'd keep in mind, it's okay for children to struggle. When our staff members send home homework, they are going into a blind. They, they had instruction on how to do it at school. And if they're struggling, let your child take the lead. Don't take over for them. Let them, if they want help, let, let them ask for it. Well, exactly what do you want help with? Yeah, because even with my three sons at home, it was very easy to just dive in and save them. But that's not what was right for them. They need to struggle. And learning is a struggle. Life is a struggle. And when you give them the gift of saying, I'm here for you, but I want you to try to figure this out. And another question that's great to ask is if they say, I don't get it. Say, okay, well, what do you know? What, what, what do you remember from the day? Really trigger their thinking and their thought process because that way you're helping them to understand that you'll be there for them in times of struggle, but you don't need to dive in and save them right away. It, it gets them used to using their words as well. The others I won't take the time to look through because I do want to jump to the back. On the back are some of the character strengths that we're going to be working on in our two-year cycle. Right now we're working through kindness and on the morning news and classroom discussions when we're doing our, our SEL or socio-emotional learning time, we, we're going to try to infuse these character strengths into our students. The reason being we know Scholastics are extremely important, but we also know if we can build them a strong foundation with these 24 character strengths, they're gonna be so ready for junior high, high school and beyond that it's gonna set them up for success no matter what they choose to do. So look those over. Um, we'll be sharing different video links with you. And I really want us to partner as we work on these. So if you have great examples at home, if your child demonstrates, for instance, during this month of September kindness, let us know so that we can uh, highlight them on the news and help them to see that kindness doesn't stop at our, our classroom doors. It's We want our students to model that everywhere that they are. And the other thing I wanted to talk about is COVID <laughs> because it is real. Today, we had to quarantine our first students due to COVID exposure. Here's what I can tell you. Universal masking is going to be huge in helping us to prevent the spread and also helping us to have to, helping us when we need to quarantine. Because the rules from the Minnesota Department of Health are if the students, even if, if someone has COVID in the classroom, and we don't know it because they are, are symptomatic, but if they have COVID, if both are in masks, we don't need to worry about quarantining. The only times of the day that we really need to focus on are when they're unmasked during lunchtime. 
So even when we had to do our quarantining today, the child was at school, asymptomatic, wasn't showing any illness. However, what we do is from the positive test, we go back a couple of days. And the only students that ended up needing to quarantine were those that were within six feet of that child during lunchtime when both their masks are. The other thing to remind your children is masks are required on the bus ride home too. That's, that's actually a federal thing that we're working through. And it helps immensely as well. So make sure and let them know sometimes when children are on the bus, when there's only the bus driver and them, they might try to sneak it down or whatever, really encourage them to act with integrity and to show kindness to the other riders on the bus and keep that mask on until they get all the way home. The handout, I encourage you to look through that. Like I said, folks at home, I'll be sending that home on Friday. Give you a little taste of, by the way, one other thing I wanna mention about COVID and masking, the students do really well with it. It's very rare that we need to remind someone to get it up over their nose. That they're, I think they understand that this is just a part of what we need to do right now so that we can be together at school. And we're hoping that our continued efforts will, when, when we have COVID cases that come from home, um, that they end up not spreading at school. And we'll be monitoring and adjusting and just be open if Nurse Jan or I have to call you and say, uh, hi, we need you to come and pick up your child. More than anything, we want your children here. However, at this time, that's what we need to do to make sure that we can stop things from spreading and we have a 10 day quarantine that we have to work through from the last day of exposure. Know that when we make that call, it's not easy on us either. And just do your best to be prepared. Talk to your neighbors, talk to your employers, figure out how you can make that work if we need to quarantine. Comments, questions, wonderings as we're starting off this new year. Yes. Great question. So the question was, if we don't need to quarantine the whole class, how do we help assure that the students will be doing some learning at home during the required quarantine? Last year, we got an immense amount of practice using Google Meets and connecting with children through Canvas and Seesaw. What the teachers will be doing is connecting at least once a day. I'm hoping more, to be quite honest with you. Um, our students are so good with their iPads. We could have one student in the classroom set up with their iPad, sort of like we're doing the meeting tonight. And then the, the children that are at home during the quarantine can join the class through the Google Meets. They'll be able to get the work through Canvas or Seesaw. Will it be the same? No, it won't be. And we, we just need to own that. We're gonna do everything we can to make it as normal as possible in a hybrid situation. Um, However, we're going to do our best to keep the children engaged, keep the assignments going so that they are still with the class when they return. Does that help? Okay. Other wonderings? Thank you, those of you that are here live. Um, you're hearing airplanes because isn't this awesome? I just love being out here in the courtyard. Um, Thank you to all of the folks that have given generously to the PTO in the past that helped to make this possible. This is phase one, and our students and staff are going to be working to figure out what phase two and three look like. So we're very excited about that. Yeah, absolutely. The question was, it's, it's still a ways away. Conferences are in the middle of October. Do we know what that might look like? Chances are, um, our, our goal is to have them in person with the universal masking. We might have you a little bit further apart in the classroom. We, you might not be right next to the teacher, um, but there's something about that face-to-face -face even mask that allows for that open conversation. We also understand that there will be some families that just might not feel comfortable with that yet. And if that's the case, um, we'll probably provide the option as a, a Google Meet as well. But the big thing is we want 100% of connections made during conferences, whether it's in person, but a little bit distanced or through that Google Meet. 
we really love to have that opportunity to meet with you, especially it's a little earlier in the year. That's purposeful. It allows us to turn it more into goal setting, see how things are going for your child at home. We'll talk about what's happening at school. So that time will be very important for us. Great question. All right, we've gotten pretty good with wait time too. Um, but thank you. If you have questions, comments, wonderings, feel free to email me, give me a call, and I'm gonna turn it back over to Vanessa. Awesome, thank you. Um, so the next thing I wanna discuss on our agenda is our missions and values. So I, as a new president, I um, was hoping that the board uh, would be able to focus on what we as a PTO stand for with our missions and with our values. And I was very um, lucky that they all obliged me and we worked through it um, in one of our sessions over the summer. And I'm just gonna read through the missions and the values that we came up with. So the mission of the PTO, the PTO works in partnership with families, staff and district to provide community engagement through equitable opportunities. It serves to support staff and students by funding innovative and creative experiences. And then the values that um, we came up with is we get to innovate, our future focus, kindness, inclusivity, or inclusive, diversity, support, resourceful, and fun. Um, the group that worked on the values came up with a really cute uh, graphic of an umbrella with um, these values as kind of the raindrops coming from it. And that's something that uh, the high school graphics design students are gonna work on. So we'll hopefully have something um, for that really soon since the school year just started. Uh, from this though, I will be sending out a um, PTO survey um, to kind of address these missions and to get input on them because as a PTO, you know, we're all in this together. We wanna make sure that these missions and values are something that we can all speak to and be really proud of. So look for that uh, before October. Next, I'll throw it over to Shauna for the treasurer's report. And our budget will be approving during this meeting. Hi, I'm Shana. Uh, this summer we worked on trying to figure out how much money we wanted to spend. And we also kind of worked out what we thought our income was gonna be for this year. Based on previous years, there's been a lot of extra income left over. And so we kind of decided as a group, we were comfortable spending more money this year and trying to make extra things like outdoor classroom, which we did a lot of fun fundraising for last year, um, come to fruition. So. Right now, our expected expenses for the year is 76,000. It might be slightly different if you're looking at a sheet at home. We added a kindergarten section recently, so we wanted to make sure that they had the same budget as the other classes did too. So it's a $500 higher for that part and then $500 for field trip. Um, I don't know if we wanna go through all the line items. No? Yeah, we can just look at it, right? Yeah, we all kind of saw it. <laughs> um, yeah, my husband, Pat, is very tech savvy. So he kind of helped us make some summary graphs so we can kind of see where we're going. This might be helpful for future meetings so we can see our expected um, targets and things. So this first one is our expense target and it shows how much we've spent each month and then with our expected or towards the end of the year. And then this one is our income target. And most of our income is gonna come from our fundraiser this fall. So then we'll kind of have a better idea of how much money we have for the rest of the year. And we might need to adjust some things accordingly. And then, Well, you can kind of see that. This is just shows our checking balance. This is a big bump from our income fundraiser last year and then kind of tracks our spending. Um, maybe more use, useful later in the year too so we can track it. And then this was our banking accounts over here. So our total balance in our account right now is $45,000 and 30 of that is from our savings. And then we have a playground account and then our checking account. And then also we kind of 
made notice that this year we're going to have to dip into our savings account more. And we, um, was it like 15,000 we wanted to make sure we had by the end of the year to cover summer spending and things until we can tie it over to our next fundraiser. Um, are there any questions about the budget? For those folks online, I'm gonna put this down. Yeah, I think there might be two more charts. Okay. Oh, yeah. I just um. So I in the chat on the Zoom, I just reshared a brief agenda, and so because folks who join late wouldn't see the chat that was on there previously. And what that's showing is this agenda. And at the bottom here, you can, so the first page is just the agenda that we've been talking through. And then the second page shows um, the more detailed agenda that Shana was showing before. Um, and hopefully you can read it. I know it's kind of, there's a lot there. <laughs> and then um, at the bottom also shows the bank accounts and um, how the spending's been going for the checking that Shana showed. And then also just to give you an idea of where all the spending has been, this is a great graphic that Jen put together that shows where our spending went last year. So it kind of gives you an idea of where things are going to go again this year because the percentages are pretty close to um, to where money goes. We have one for this year too. Oh, there's one this year. Okay. There's a question in the chat. Is there a budget for yearbooks for staff this year? There is not. There is not. Are there any other questions? Um, let me pull up that graphic. Maybe adding yearbooks for the staff is a possibility. So it's not Line you through the Yeah, yeah, thanks, Ashley. I'll reiterate that I was waiting uh, for a Jen to finish up, but Jen had a really great comment. You know, as a board, when we were discussing the expenses, um, there were things that we needed to cut, but it's a really a fluid budget. So, you know, depending on how things go with fundraising this fall, if we do great with fundraising and we have extra money, then we can, you know, add more of an expense to things that currently don't have um, any money allocated to it. But I think there are, there are some items, you know, throughout this um, budget that you'll see that don't really have much to it. So your book is one. I think the community outreach is another one. So there are a few things there where we just didn't have the money for right now as we're planning but again if things go well with fundraising then it could be um money look at later it's another comment for yearbook specifically you can get 10 percent off if we order by the end of the month oh okay that's a really good comment so the comment on zoom was that um we can get 10 percent off if we order by the end of the month for yearbooks that's good to know and probably something we should add Right. Actually, Jen was saying if you want to unmute and um, share how the yearbook works uh, so that people on Zoom can hear you as well, that would be great. And if not, um, I can reiterate what she said. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, so basically for yearbooks, there's um, the PTO in the past, we've made a bulk order for staff to be able to each get their own yearbook. And as the PTO is tax exempt, so the actual price for the books was something like around $12 instead of 15. And then for each yearbook that's purchased by a family, um, $1 of that goes to a PTO uh, fundraiser. And I'm sure everyone in Zoom could hear you and I could hear you just fine, but um, the folks in person maybe had a hard time with that. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll be on the recording. Thanks, Ashley. I appreciate that. Um, are there any other questions about the budget? 
No, okay. And then do we do we approve it now? Okay, yes. I appreciate everyone's grace and understanding that we're kind of new to this. So um so there was a motion to approve the budget. Do we have a second? I second that. And then there's a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thanks, everyone. You did. Well, I remember the PTO yeah, can vote. Are there, um, is any, does anyone oppose? Please type it in the chat. Okay. All right, thanks everyone. Um, and you know, again, I just wanna say this PTO is our PTO. So for everyone online um, and in person, if there are ever any questions, even though it is approved, I think, you know, feel free to reach out to board members um, and, and ask them because it's really important that everyone has a good understanding of what we're doing and why we're here and where this funding goes to. And, you know, you should never be afraid to ask those questions because if you do, then as a board that might give us an idea of what we do um, get out there for communication so that others who probably have the same question um, get that knowledge too. So I'm gonna throw that out there. All right, great, thanks. So next we're gonna talk about fundraising. I'm gonna invite Jen Cameron to come up here and talk about that. Hi everyone, I'm Jen, traveling on me. Um, a quick, like high level um, view of our goals for fundraising this year are um, that we really set the goal high. Um, as you can see from the budget, we reached um, with our spending goal. We um, I think in an average year, spend about $40,000. And we plan to spend a significantly more, um, a significantly more amount of money than that. So this year we are really hoping to raise 45 and to put that a little bit in perspective, um, our average fundraiser, which in the past has been a readathon or a walkathon or um, something thon-ish, um, we typically raise about 30 to 35,000. And so we've uh, put a little cherry on that and we're hoping that we can raise a little bit more. Um, if we reach our goal, um, then we'll be able to do all of the wonderful things that the PTO has outlined in the budget. So field trips, which were not in last year's budget. So we spent, I think $32,000 last year uh, but we we only sent half of a class or one half of a grade on a field trip um, at the very end of the year. And so we we wanted to put those things back in um, and we raised classroom budgets knowing that not only are things more expensive, but um, there would be different kinds of needs as our classrooms change and as the kids are learning a little different. So um, we've turned some of our typical fundraising events like bingo um, into free community events because we know um, that being, you know, in, in line with our values, um, we want to be able to serve our community equitably and we want to make sure that everyone feels welcome. Um, we did free bingo last year. We kind of tried it on for size. Everyone had a great time. I thought it was awesome. We did it online. Not The bar's not like, you know, crazy high. So relax, Lucy. Um, but I, I think that by... Uh, tweaking some of these things that we do um, that we've typically made money on um, into free events that actually puts a little bit more pressure onto our main fundraiser, which is usually two weeks. Um, and so we focused it more on um, like a direct give, which um, is, you know, a little different than normal instead of having four or five, six fundraisers throughout the year where we make two, three, four thousand dollars. Um, we're hoping that instead of you know, spending $50 at bingo, you give that $50 in a direct give during our two-week fundraiser. Um, we have some 
uh, partnerships with community businesses that we've pursued. We had Mills City Credit Union commit to giving us $7,000 this year, which is more than they have ever committed to giving us before. Um, they're also doing some amazing things for our staff. And um, some of you got the free like silly pencils that we gave out at open house. And so they have um, some really fun things up their sleeve to be able to support us in other ways as well. But to write a check for $7,000 um, is pretty cool. So we have three or four other businesses that we're talking to as well that we're hoping come through um, you know, in a cash kind of way. And I think that all of that comes together in a way that is going to help us meet our fundraising goal. Um, our main fundraiser starts Friday. We'll kick it off with the back to school block party, which is this Friday. Um, we, the, the whole event is free as always. It's usually the event that we hold at the end of the year, um, but we'll have free food and the ninja course that's going to be here throughout the day is also free. Um, we've got, um, photo booth, we've got DJ, we've got face painting, we've got all kinds of fun things and it's all free. And of course we'll have opportunities for you to be able to donate. Um, we're also gonna do two raffles, um, something that we <laughs> have not tried before. Um, one raffle is gonna be $5 a ticket and it's a split the pot raffle. So it's just the one night of block party. You buy as many $5 tickets as you want. And at the end of the night, we pull a number and half of whatever went into that pot goes home with the winner and half of it goes back to the PTO. Um, so, you know, if it's a $20 pot, then rock on, you win 10. And if it's a $500 pot, then you win 250 bucks. So I think that'll be fun um, and an easy way to be able to donate to the PTO. Um, and then we also have a cool raffle, which we're actually gonna run for the whole two weeks um, that is a private dinner for 10, a chef's dinner at Boulevard. And that'll be $100 a ticket. And we will pull the winning ticket at the Parents' Night Out, which will uh, wrap up our two-week fundraising. Um, it's September 24th. I think it's 7 to 10. Could be 6 to 10. I can't remember off six the top of my nine? head. 6 to 9? Six. Six. We'll clarify. Um, <laughs> Maybe six to maybe six to nine. That sounds right. Um, but we'll pull that winning ticket at that event, um, and that actually will close out our silent auction as well. So the silent auction will open at eight a.m. on Friday. We have so much good stuff in this auction. I had um, a parent donate like six or eight things today. So every single day, I've been adding more and more. Um, and then we also have the birdhouses in the auction this year. And the quick skinny on the birdhouses is this was a project um, where the kids um, had a contest every year. This is like 20 or 30 years ago they started doing this. And the kids would have a, a contest. And the winner of the contest um, would have their designed birdhouse built by um, a Tanglin staff member's family. And then it would be hung in our library for now 30 years and with our library remodel um, they came out of the the rafters and um, admittedly we contacted the families of those birdhouses and extended them the first opportunity to have their birdhouse back um, and I was like no way are people going to want those birdhouses and it turned out everybody wants their birdhouse and it's been already a huge fundraiser tons of families have reached out to us and said can i just make a donation to the pto and you can take it out of the auction because my daughter just bought her first house and i want to give this birdhouse to her and let her hang it out hang it in her backyard and so we've got about 25 birdhouses that have been pulled out of the auction already they're in the front office sorry um and those will get picked up by families um late this week or early next week. And so far we've raised 800 bucks on birdhouses, which I think is pretty huge. Um, we'll have another 50 that are still gonna be in the auctions. So you're not missing out. Um, and some of them are really great. The, the Tanglin Tiger is still in the auction. So if anybody wants to bid on the Tanglin Tiger, just so you know, it's still there. Um, so that probably, um, sums it up. I, I think I want to wrap it up by saying um, 
I ran the, the fundraiser last year and I did some analysis on um, what came out of it afterwards. And what I noticed was about 90% of what we raised in that direct give came from less than 20% of our families. And I think that that speaks to our demographic, certainly, of what's happening in our school. But I also think that that calls for lots of opportunity. I think that if we were able to take even 10% of that missing 80% and we got $20 from an extra 10% of those people, we would raise so much more money. And that would bridge our gap of between 30 and 45,000. So I think it's, um, it's pretty significant to note that um, we can all do a, 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 a service to our school by just mentioning to our friends in our neighborhood and our community that this fundraiser is happening. Um, it's always surprising to me how like grandma in Ohio gets a hold of this link and puts 10 bucks in their kid's account. Um, and we know that not all of our kids are going to feel comfortable walking their neighborhoods and asking their neighbors for money. Um, and we know that um, the kids who do end up making a significant impact in our school, and that allows us to build outdoor courtyards and send kids on field trips and do things that uh, really impact everyone in our school. So um, I just want to encourage people to talk about the fundraiser when they go places. We'll share the fundraising link with our community business partners. Last year, we had two people buy the auction um, action items that weren't even Tanglin families. They were just business people out in the community who were like, that's cool and they bought stuff. So um, share it with your, your network and your friends and your people, put it on Facebook. Um, it makes a difference in our fundraising. That probably sums it up. will come out later, right? For the direct share link and open it. For um, fundraising? Mm -hmm. Yes, so we will make sure that if you come to the block party that you leave the block party with um, all of the resources that you need to be able to sign up for the fundraiser. We will send stuff home in the Friday folders this week with the sign up link. Um, it's the same link that you've always used before, Pledge Star. Um, so if you've done it before, you're familiar. Um, if you're new, you'll get stuff in your kids folder, Friday folders or backpacks coming home on Friday. And then of course, it'll be in, Dr. Habeis and S'more and um, on the PTO Facebook page and like at pretty any place that we put communication, you know, it's, it'll be hard to miss. So if you have questions, obviously you can just reach out to the PTO um, and send us an email and we're, any of us are always happy to help get you signed up and yeah. Last year, I think we did, we had the kids sign themselves up, um, which was kind of a wreck. I'm not gonna lie. We had, because we were counting school or reading minutes. Mm -hmm. So we set it up so that the kids could set up their own accounts in their classroom. And then the parents would go home and set up another account for fundraising, right? Because you didn't want your second grader sending emails out on their own. So we ended up with two accounts for almost every family. And then mom would put in 50 minutes because that's what the kid read that night. But then the kid would also put in 50 minutes so now you're like, did they read a hundred minutes or so there was a lot of <laughs> maintenance when it came to minutes. So that's why we're cutting the staff a little bit of slack and there's no minutes to count and there's no accounts to create. Um, but it does put it back on the shoulders of the parent to really own the account and help um, help your kid put the email addresses in and get it's it's tech um, text email um, and social are super easy little buttons that you push on the um, Pledge Star link that allows you to share out these the donation, um, and of course you can always drop checks and cash off. There's always kids that come in with dollars and cents and checks, and uh, so we'll make sure that all the families know how they can contribute and get it into the building. Are there questions about fundraising? I'm not looking at the chat. Maybe if you want to get the chat over, you are. Yeah, nobody's. Okay. Anything. Um. Yeah, I think that sums it up. Cool. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Shen. Um, so let's move right along. We're well and through this. Um, so and there are many opportunities to get involved with the PTO fundraising um, and bringing in you know, resources that way is a great way to do it. Um, being part of this meeting and just 
being involved so you know what's happening, following up with reading minute, meeting minutes online. If you aren't able to join or watching the video afterwards, it's a great way to get involved with the PTO and just know what's happening. Uh, another way is in the s'mores every Friday. We're trying to add a little bit to a PTO corner at the bottom. So there are always some important things there if you wanna know what's happening with the PTO. And um, there's also ways to volunteer your time if that's available. And so one of those is with grade reps. And I'm looking around to see who wants to talk about that. I think Gary does. I'll just say last year I volunteered as a grade rep for kindergarten and you know, it's kind of up my alley because I enjoy doing some of those crafty things. So if that's a thing that you may enjoy, this may be an opportunity for you. Welcome over to Carrie. Great. Um, we've got us. We had a sign up out at the open house, and we got quite a few people um, who wanted to volunteer. So we've got some grades with maybe about seven people, and we've got a few grades with about one, um, fourth and fifth grade specifically. If um, anybody out there wants to join the PTO email is up there and you can reach out. Um, our idea for the grade reps is you are going to be the point of contact for the teachers, but everything that the teacher needs does not fall on your shoulders. So you are then going to be reaching out to the community um, in the grade to try to get the support needed that the teacher, um, if it is cutting things out, doing those art stuff, um, if it's coming in for something, if we're able to, I'm not sure, but um, that type of stuff, which will probably change in and out throughout the year, um, as well as maybe setting up some community engagement things, such as a playground night or a kickball game, just trying to get some people together um, with classes and the whole grade. Um, so if there's any questions, um, I'll take those, otherwise, uh, I'll send an email for you. Oh, and the email if anybody else wants to join it. Uh, Jen and I are going to do a Zoom meeting for the grade reps this year just to kind of check in and um, talk about what we're thinking and answer questions so that we will contact everybody on the list in the next, so hopefully setting something up next week or the following week. Thanks. Um, there's some in-person discussion about how kids will win prizes during the fundraiser, but how that's going to happen will be a mystery, so stay tuned. It's a cliffhanger. <laughs> Lucy, do you want to talk about the supply cabinet? Um, here's another opportunity, and we're going to have Lucy talk about the staff supply cabinet. I'm going to click on this link. There you go. Okay. Oh, good. Super. Yeah. Um, so as we kind of talked about even with yearbooks, things like that, one thing when we were talking budget, um, Jen Cameron had a great idea of making a supply closet for staff um, at, at the school. But with just, again, the budget talk, we decided to take that out of um, the budget this year. Um, but then, you know, I think just to make a, um, an opportunity for people to really give a something back to the school if if um, if they're able to. We did set up an Amazon wish list um, link uh, that I think the link is now shared or will be shared um, that just has some of the back to school supplies that uh, the teachers and staff may need throughout the year. Um, if this is, I'm gonna try my best to update it as needed and um, contact and, and communicate with the teachers um, other things that they may, may need throughout the year. Um, but, it's a, just another, again, another way to, um, if you can just jump on Amazon and you know order a pack of markers or something like that, then we can fill this supply closet um, as able. So thanks. Um, thanks. So I was gonna throw it out here for questions if um, any folks online or in person have anything they wanna ask the PTO or any other things that you wanna mention to the PTO community. Now would be the time. Can I just make a reminder for people to make sure that they sign the online waiver for the oh. ninja course that we have for Friday, which they would be able to do in person at the block party, but we're planning on bringing the kids out throughout the day. And mm -hmm. They can't do it if we don't have the waiver signed. 
Yep, this is just a reminder about the uh, Ninja course on Friday. Um, there's a waiver that um, parents need to sign for the kids that participate during the day. So if you're coming for the evening portion and you haven't signed the waiver yet, you can sign the waiver in person, then at the block party, but that means that the child won't be able to participate, participate during the day when the whole class is out there. So you wanna make sure you get that done so they can um, have a good time with their classmates. Oh, Thanks. and I did, for teacher's sake, we got a printable one today. If there's a handwritten one that needs to go home with somebody, we just need to input that electronically at some point. But if we get a parent's signature on the paper, we can put it electronically. Okay, there is a uh, paper version of the waiver as well that is going to go out. No. 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 If, if you if, need, if it, needs it, you can grab it from the front office. Okay. Yep, so if you need an online, if you need a paper waiver, contact your teacher so they can send one home um, with your child and uh, bring it back Friday morning. Yeah. But online is, yeah, it's super easy. Yeah. I think it's just yeah. your name and that's super it. Super easy to do online. I think you know, anybody that has a cell phone should be able to do it online. We're trying to get, you know, just would hate to see a lot of kids left out because they couldn't get that sound printed yeah. there. So. Yep, so, so, yep, go ahead. Yes. Yes. So at the block party, right? Because during the day it'll be coming out to school, but at the block party, any siblings can. And I've noticed, like, I have a link to see who signed the waiver, and families with older siblings and things have just mm -hmm. put all of their kids in, or with yeah. younger kids. So if you just put all your kids in there, they can they can do it. And then if you're at the block party, like I said, they'll have the QR code mm -hmm. there. You can scan it and do it. The big concern is during the day at school when the parents aren't. Yep, so that was a question about whether or not siblings who are not at Tanglin, if they can participate, and they definitely can. So you can vote the waiver for them ahead of time or also in person at the Black Party Works, too. That's a great question. <laughs> it makes me so sad. No, I have a hunch that they'll. Jen, it's choice and consequence. Yes. <laughs> Um, they're discussing about <laughs> what's going to happen if um, kids don't sign the waiver. And I'm sure it'll be fine. Maybe it's a little bit sad, I think, is a nice way to say it. Well, that will convince them to convince their parents that yeah. they have to come back for block party because then they can right. do it. They yeah, do and it. so just a reminder again, they can always come to the block party in the evening and do it if they don't get a chance to do it, to do it during the day. And the block party is this Friday from four to eight, seven, it's far to seven. Um, it's all free. There's gonna be food, a DJ, a photo booth, face painting. So all the things and come and do all the things with your favorite Tangling community. Yep, one second. All right, so it's Jim again. Uh, to kind of combine a couple things about fundraiser and the block party. At the block party at 5.30, as you know, I have a tradition of doing uh, something kind of fun, something kind of big, if students reach their fundraising goal. I will be announcing live at 5.30 what it is. I can tell you my wife is not happy about it. I can tell you my sons are so excited. And a few former students that I've told are very excited too. So if you're curious to see what, what I will do, if we can get to that $45,000, you're going to have to come uh, to the block party. And I'll announce it live at 530. Oh my God, that's such a good idea. Thank you. So many cliffhangers today. Um, well, I don't see any questions in the chat. So I will, does somebody, mo can I motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Oh, okay. There's a motion to adjourn and there's a second to adjourn. So thanks for joining this PTO meeting and we'll see you again in November. Which is when the next one will be. All in favor? Great.